Welcome, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is the last session of our 20, March 2022 Pain Points Week. Um, and there is certainly a lot of pain out there and we're doing our best to try and address some of the more immediate problems. I'm CEO of HOSPA, Jane Pendlebury, and you are very welcome here today. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm very pleased to be joined by two panelists today, um, Maria McCree from Ivy and Linda Best from Swinfern Hall Hotel. Today's issue follows a similar theme. It's all about delivering more with less. The buzzwords of the pandemic were less contact, more engagement, and that seems to have been switched now into delivering more with less. But it doesn't necessarily have to mean overburdening teams with more responsibility. It can just be putting a focus onto efficiency. I know that Maria and Linda are both keen to answer questions from anybody listening in today. So please do pop any questions or comments into the Q&A or the chat boxes below. We're here for half an hour, so I'm keen to get started. And if we just start with um, Maria, would you just like to quickly say who you are and what you do? Sure. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Thanks for, for having me, firstly, Jane. Uh, privileged to be here. Um, so Maria McCree, I head up all of the business development here at Ivy. Um, and for those of you, of you that are listening in that may not have heard of us or know what Ivy is or does, um, we manage the life cycle of that entirety, end to end of your meetings and your events, um, working very much with the likes of the wonderful uh, Swinfen Hall, who are on the call today. So delighted that you're joining us, Linda. Thank you. Um, and we work all the way through within the, the hotel industry, Jane. So right the way up to the likes of village hotels, um, aligned with some really iconic venues um, equally. Uh, so proud to equally partner with the likes of Wembley, Twickenham, and a whole lot more. So whether you've got one space or larger capacity, uh, Ivy very much will, will man manage all of your, your mice business for you. Thank Fantastic. You. Fantastic. And Linda? Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Jane. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Linda Best. I'm a a consultant um, sales director and have, have having over 20 years in, in the um, co conference and events industry, moving into hotels has been very exciting for me. So I'm consulting and have been for the last um, 10 months at Swinfern Hall Hotel in Staffordshire, a lovely country house property um, that actually has sort of 17 bedrooms and opening up into um, a, a bigger state that, that we're working with and, and and to attract sort of it's a very much a wedding venue but i've been brought in to look after sort of new processes and procedures how we can make the hotel a little bit more efficient work very well uh recruiting staff and i was also looking at the sales process and that and managing that from from start to finish and bringing more private dining and corporate events to the hotel which i've managed to do but also with my experience i've looked at how the processes work and how we can make things more efficient and more better for the operations team as well. So um, addressing today's issue of um, my team being overworked, uh, can you tell us what, what you think the biggest issues were, or particularly maybe when you joined that hotel, what the biggest issue, issue was and how it was addressed? Absolutely. So like everybody, we're all, you know, what we call our, our short staff. We, you know, there's not even staff, staff and teams in the ground to have to recruit people. But what I found in the first instance, because the, the hotel was had a very had a very good ratio of staff who stayed with the hotel through the pandemic. Um, so we didn't have a lot of dropout of staff, but what we had was how we could work efficiently and better together as teams and how, like in every hotel and every business, how you communicate well. The hotel processes were very um, manual. They didn't have any CRM systems. We had no booking functions that was anything to do with any. So there was no digital product in place that would manually that would take every function from housekeeping to to um, the sales function right the way through to your operations on on a basis. Everything was a paper manual system that you you type up a piece of paper and walk it to a different department and put it on a notice board. And that was key from, from from start to play to the end. There was no there was no booking systems or any 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 functions that we could do that would make the processes very easy and swift. And 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 again, when you're sort of looking at a manual process, you you you're relying on then making sure your staff are there and that communication is going through. But it's open for for things to go wrong or to, or to change and, and for updating not, not to happen at the right time. So for me, um, it was really important to look at, you know, what was out there and, and what solutions we could come up to, to say, well, what can we put in to, so we can train the staff and communicate well, but be swift. You know, we were all trying to sell a product, but you, if you have a manual process, it just takes so much time. It takes things, you know, longer to deliver. So 
I went out with the with the directors and we sourced um, a solution to come into the hotel because that was the only way that we could help alleviate staff time. Because by the time you're doing a manual, manual function, we've decided that, well, we, we've proven in the last uh, three months that we can free up, you know, 30 to 40% of our staff time from manual tasks because we put a digital solution into the hotel. And that's made the hotel and the operation a lot more slicker and put smoother, but then we can go out and find, we've got time to go out and get more business there ourselves. People are not busy doing the, the functions that the operations would do because it's a different environment and you're having to sort of type everything manually. And now it's, it's a push of a button, even wow. billing and everything's so much, so much better and so much easier for us. But it's also, again, how you communicate to your customers and what that communication and what those communications look like as well. So when you can send out, you know, you, the, the, the difference now in sending a function sheet out to a customer from a manual to to a, to a to one generated by a system is so much better and it looks more slick and you know it gives you a better reputation for your hotel yeah so not only is it is it a lot more efficient and time saving but it actually looks more professional to, for the for the end user as well for the potential wedding absolutely yeah no, absolutely and that sort of you know helped because, because again, with our, with our with the other pressure on our teams is, and it is about pain points and, and how we've managed to look at solutions. But of course, it's been the supply chain solution. But putting all of our menus into a system when you can choose what's available, because you can look at your food. Because again, like 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 supply chains getting food to your hotel, what's available in terms of what you can deliver as part of your menu. By using um, a digital solution and having all your menus loaded, you can switch and change out food to what's available. So that's given us another another arm to our boat to say, well, actually, we can be, we, we can deal, deal with. I mean, it, the supply chain route will get better in the future because you know there are solutions. You you have to be you have to plan a lot more in advance. Think about your menus in advance, what you're able to to obtain, what you're able to, to deliver. But I've also managed to use that digital solution into in ways that we can plan our menus in advance and, and know what we can we can deliver for our customers. Yes, gosh, you touched on a lot of other pain points there, um, just in, in that little bit. Um, I've just got one, one more quick question, then I've got another one for, for Marie. But when you went from the manual process to the digital process, how was it accepted by staff? Did, were they just, thank goodness for that, we're finally sort of catching up with everybody else, or was there any resistance? No matter, and I found it in, in, in all sort of ways, no matter when you, when you bring in a new digital system and it's different, People are real, and and in real life circumstances, and, and and we do have a few months staff that go, oh, I'm not going to be able to cope with this. Um, oh, this is so different. I'm I'm used to working in a particular way, and that's people, you know. And and it's about for me, it was about that training and development, sitting down and understanding everybody's individual capability of taking on new new information, new processes, but take it. But we were quite. Um, we thought about how how our staff would sort of align with all the processes and how they would work um and for me we chose a system that is not too over complicated that actually has a set you know it, it makes sense how you work through the process from start to finish it's just inputting it in a different way so yes of course it's different people are having to change the way that they work and think about how to do it differently but we haven't had any any resistance at all and everybody's taken on board all the processes it's just taken a little bit longer um and we've but we put the time in for that so when we thought we might deliver it in a month we actually delivered it in two months because we took the time out to make sure everybody understood the benefit and if everybody sees a benefit and sees how it makes their day a little bit different and it, it, it can sort of free up some of their time and they're not bogged down with doing manual paperwork for us it was um it was really well received within our organization and the teams that were working with it so okay. I think the answer to your question was yes of course it will and no matter what and we're all human and doesn't matter you know what age value your hotel is and who your people are there's never nobody's ever going to fall in line all at the same time and understand it but it's knowing your teams and working with your staff and understanding their processes and, and adapting your timelines to make sure your people are comfortable yeah, absolutely. Um, because because staffing is such a, a massive issue oh. at the moment. Um, I mean, if, if you say you were lucky with your staff um, at the hotel, but still, just people do move. We know they move. Um, um, Maria, you told me a really interesting story about. Do you want to just? You know what I'm going to ask you because we talked about yeah. it now, but about about it's a re related to recruitment. Yeah, just off the back of what Linda said there, Jane, um, I had a conversation only last week with a, a chap up in Manchester, and uh, he was. Um, 
recruiting and is still recruiting for an event coordinator role. And he said, Maria, I've had 33 CVs land on my desk in the last week, but you know, only three of them have got the talent and the skill set actually that I'm looking for. And it's a whole lot of time, you know, administering that, coordinating interviews. Are they going to show up? Are they going to be what you know what I think they're going to be on paper um and you know that's the stark reality of of still um the industry that we're in and you know as as Rupert alluded to on your, your earlier call on the masterclass this week Jane so many um you know of your industry chums if you will are no longer in hospitality they've they've changed sector um they've either gone back to you know their homeland countries um and it's so tough because um it, as you say Linda you know adapting to change is, is different Difficult and, and nobody really ever likes change unless, as you say, they can see that benefit. But we're just all expected, whether you're a hotel or, or, or not, you know, as an end user operator, you're expected to do so, so much more with a whole lot less. And if your manual is as you once were only last year, mm. do you know, it does take so much time. I mean, I have conversations day in, day out and, you know, I'll get, you know, people saying to me where it's taking me, you know, 60 to 90 minutes to send out a proposal you know within our system it's four or five minutes you know mm. and it's so labor intensive and, and yes. you think about the cost of sale you think about all your overheads everything else that you've got going on you know your inquiries are still swamping into the inbox um so systemization is so so key today more so than it's you know ever been um Another example was only in, in November, I actually myself was organising a corporate event. Um, and on Monday morning of that week, I started out and I said, right, these are my six venues, four actually of which were were clients um, and uh, two two weren't, but they, they were a good fit. And uh, by the Wednesday, I'd had one response. By the Friday, I'd had three responses. And again, that is the harsh reality of our industry of, you know, reduced SLA times, some not even coming back to, back at all. You know, the two that did send me proposals weren't proposals. They were really lovely long essays on an email, if you will. Um, so again, you know, my assumption is they're probably manual docs, Excel, you know, and we're sort of all nodding because that's generally what, what so many larger organisations are like with, with small venues, are, sadly, as, as, you know, how they're operating. But, um, I think automation is just key more so now than ever of that time and that cost save um, because we've got still sadly a reduction of up to 75% workforce ac across our industry, you know, um, and you've got maybe one or two members of the team doing the work for maybe you know, three three times the size of it in, in reality. Mobile phones going to, you know, unbranded EEO2 mobile numbers and you're thinking, is this actually the person I want to speak to? You know, <laughs> they're not calling me back. Uh, you know, am I, who am I actually speaking to? And again, that is the reality because people aren't necessarily sat, you know, in their office. Uh, they might be like myself working remote, you know, 80% of the time. So, um, you know, our pain is also their pain as well. Yeah, that's um, well, it's good to know that the inquiries are all flooding in, which we, we all know to be true, all those delayed deferred weddings and all the other parties, family get togethers. So, I mean, it is putting pressure on, on venues for sure. Um, it was really interesting what you said there about that, the volume of CVs coming in for a single position and them not actually fitting the criteria. I was talking to somebody um, in financial recruitment who said something very similar and that they were inundated with uh, CVs for, for a particular job. Many of them were just not 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 capable of, of fulfilling the criteria at all but then once they had got down to the final few um i guess in, in a, a job like finance you can probably command a, a, a different salary potentially to to somebody who's um running an event shouldn't be fair but anyway that's how it is um but they were saying that the issue then was that they were pushing salary up and up and up because offers were coming in left right and center um and then even once the job had been offered the the, the hotel the venue hospitality business whatever it was um, wasn't convinced that the person would actually turn up because there was just so, so many other job offers out there. Are you having a power cut, Linda? <laughs> the lights have just gone off in my room. I'm going to I'm going to move and put them back on, but uh, keep talking. <laughs> okay, we will keep talking. That's fine. Um, so you touched, Linda, on the on the supply chain, and we all know that's um, a, a, an issue in so many different ways from 
from linen to food to and, and, and staff, I guess, can fall, um, fall part of that. There's a, there's a lot of issues going on. Um, and I guess that's not going to be helped by the current situation with um, Ukraine and, and what's going on there and the Russian invasion. Um, I think that's going to affect business travel significantly although it doesn't appear to be yet um but i can only imagine any kind of unrest normally normally does um and yeah it's, it's a pretty dire situation maria you were going to make some comment i think on on business travel yeah i think we're, we're obviously already still very much you know in a very vulnerable market and i think um tourism hospitality you know overall i don't believe we've actually yet recovered from um you know the hardship and the unprecedented scale that we're, we're you know we're seeing and it is for some still a very slow recovery for others it could be the other end you know it could be a complete boom um but sadly not for everybody and i think um the loss of those that you know perhaps were employed once that are no longer employed or in in, in the sector as you say the multitude of issues around supply um you know the lack of service personnel i, I think we are going to see further change in uh, travel patterns i really do um and i think you know um mm -hmm. sadly with what's going on at the moment you know of course our hearts all go out to the ukrainians oh. um you know, I think people will look at it and they will think, well, do we want to travel to the UK? You know, do we want to go to Europe? Because we're right next door, in, you know, in hindsight to to say, you know, an American or, you know, somebody overseas. Um, and again, it's the ongoing challenge, isn't it? For what was certainly for me once fun to go traveling, it's now deemed I guess a hassle, you know, do I need a passenger locator form? Do I need to take a day two or a day two eight test? You know, and, and you're always checking your, I don't know, a bit like me, you know, you're always checking your apps or your, your sort of .gov website. But I think one thing COVID has taught us all is how do you scan a QR code? You know, how do you use an app? Um, but my heart really goes out to the older generation. You know, my dad's 75. He hasn't got a smartphone just about is getting tech savvy with the new iPad I've recently bought him. But, you know, it's things like that where the older generation particularly might have perhaps more disposable income and actually might want to, you know, pop off to their retri uh, retirement villa. Um, but actually, you know, it's that hassle and that fright, isn't it, almost, of, you know, how do I use this app? You know, what's the NHS app? You know, we've all just become accustomised to it. Um, and again, you know, taking our COVID tests, doing our regular at-home checks, our lateral flows, PCR, but yeah, I, I think the um, this crisis at the moment really comes at a time when we are, as a nation, going through a, a mass amount of inflation as well. Um, and, you know, we're ever more having to be flexible within our terms, our conditions, how we operate, giving our customers, of course, full reassurance. So, yeah, I, I think business travel will um, absolutely impact and, um, you know, not not too sure of course what, what's ahead it's I guess we all kind of want those you know those crystal balls and you know want to answer the million dollar question but yeah that, that's kind of my view well I completely agree I think I, I concur in that and I think there's, there's still because we you know in my sort of other hat that I have and I do representation for for different organizations and we're looking at um looking at um incoming and, and representation for different organizations and there's one country that um is, is thinking about doing an incoming fam trip for May, but now we're thinking and we're going out to go and get supplier to go to go into the country for May. But is that realistic? Our people and 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 you know we've pressed pause on it for, for a day to say, well, actually, are people going to travel? What's it going to look like? You know, there's a strict criteria of how we go, of, of what buyers they want to come into, which is great. Um, you know, because we will want to deliver sort of value for every single uh, country and and bring the right business into that country and and. And, and to deliver it, but will people travel now? And and that's the big that is the, the big pause that we're doing. So well, let's just evaluate, see how the next the next you know ten day you know ten 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 days and and, and just start start the conversations and 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 getting getting that travel and getting that confidence for people to travel is going to be the thing. And I think it's watch this space really because mm -hmm. the next few days are going to be quite crucial in terms of how things are going to going to sort of you know escalate really isn't it i think absolutely you're 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 completely right and there's there's pros and cons to business travel of course having had a a, a master class earlier in the week on on sustainability so the fact that people aren't traveling does does have its benefits as well but 
there's nothing quite like the person-to-person -person interaction. We were so lucky at our conference back in November, um, which I know you were at, Maria, um, because it was before the Omicron variant had come in, people were feeling relatively confident about the uh, risk of COVID. Uh, and that enabled, enabled us to have a, a brilliant face-to-face -face contact um, uh, event, which just reminded us how much we'd missed it and how valuable it is to be actually physically in the same room as people. Um, but not to lose sight of things like this, um, in that we can just deliver this really simply, really quickly, really easily. It's, it's, it's recorded, people can come in live, they can ask their questions live, or they can listen to it afterwards. Um, so th there's benefits to both, I guess, and that's, um, it's, but, it, uh, but I do miss that face-to-face -face contact um, and just the ease of just saying, right, yes, I'm off, to, um, I'm off to Spain or I'm off to wherever it might be. Um, someone here has mentioned um, that technology, uh, it's, it's a long-winded one, I've, I've managed to summarise it while you were talking, Maria. Um, in effect, what it says is that, um, that if by implementing technology, you become more efficient and therefore you're able to get back to people more quickly, which was the point you were making about yeah. inquiries coming in. Um, and the point, the point they're making is, can please everyone make sure they do the same with CVs when people apply <laughs> for jobs, um, even if out of those, was it 33, 37, whatever your, your um, colleague got and only three being appropriate. Um, I think the message is, please just get back to those people, say thank you very much for your application. And if there's time for feedback, brilliant. If there isn't, just say, you know, skills didn't match and they'll probably say yeah I know I was I was winging it a bit I was hoping um but I think that communication thing is 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 always will be always has been uh key to everything isn't it and um speed the speed of getting back to people is very very important um Absolutely. I mean I I was speaking to somebody only um the other day Jane on um, Monday and she actually um is, is in a hotel and uh, she, like myself, was in the market last year, was arranging uh, actually a, a birthday party. And she'd reached out to a couple of uh, venues on her doorstep and she had one response. I had two, I was obviously a bit more luckier, um, but um, she actually just went with the, the one that came back to her. And it, you know, she could have potentially got a better price. She could have got maybe a better package, a better location, but it was the fact that somebody had actually responded. And if you're not within that first response, you know, if you've, if you've left it even 48 hours, you've lost me, you know, as, as, as mm. a customer in the market, mm. I've gone down the road to your competitor more than likely. So, you know, the fight really, it's kind of staggering and astounding in one sense, because you would think people are wanting to get that money back through the till, you know, kind of get that occupancy, get, you know, get the people through the door um but yeah you know the response levels because of the resource and the you know the reduction of workforce um heartbreaking it really is but you know you've you've just got to be there um and respond within you know i think 24 hours absolutely at the, the very most is um you know, really, you want to respond within the first few hours, uh, and again, just just touch that, yeah. that correspondence out. Um, as I'm sure you do had, probably win oh, your business in, in that respect as well. I would imagine. No, absolutely. In that respect, uh, in terms of turning inquiries around, that's where we've been successful because we've managed to again changing our processes back to that digital proposal straight out. We and and we've had more inquiries. We you know we have managed to literally um, answer every single inquiry that's came through the door, whether it's from um, a telephone inquiry or again via our direct, our direct website uh, inquiry channel that comes through, we've managed to go back succinctly. And, and when we have done and follow them up with a phone call straight away, nine times out of 10, they'll book straight away because Again, they're not getting that that many responses, and not that many, um, not many, not that many responses or, or inquiry sort of feedback. Because they start to say, "Well, you know, my, my boss wanted two or three um, proposals to put together, but I've got one, but that's what I'm going to have to go with because we need to to, to run our event at a certain time." And actually, it's having those conversations that then can turn that cell into to being saying, "Well, yeah, I know you have got two or three, but you know, we are one of the best projects in thought about us." So it is that sort of self through, but it's that confidence that confidence in getting that, that information straight out to following it up. And I think you were right when you were talking about CVs and, and, and how it should be. I mean, we just recruited um, and looking again, we were looking for a sales coordinator for, for, for the hotel. Um, and what we found was we've actually helped sponsor a young lady who's just finishing her degree at um, up, up in Sheffield University on an event management course. So she can, she's working with us at the weekends and we're training her as a sales coordinator so she can join us in May and then become a full member of our team. 
So that's another way that we've managed to sort of recruit a sales coordinator for the future by helping supporting her getting her degree. She works with us at the weekends and then she'll start with us in, in May. And we've also brought in two university staff, University College Birmingham. We've got two students who are on their final year and need a year's placement. So they've actually, um, they're two international students who live in the hotel now with us. Um, and they are working around different departments. So one lady's in, in uh, housekeeping this in, for, the, for the next month, another lady's in the sales office, and they'll rotate around the different departments in the hotel. And that's another way we've managed to avoid a staffing crisis <laughs> within yeah, the property ourselves. That, that's very inspiring. It takes me back to um, when I started my career, I did a year out, I was doing a degree and I did a year out with Devere and went around all the different departments. So literally from housekeeping, kitchen, front office, you know, all the whole lot. It's a, it's a yeah. great way to give you a, a thorough grounding and to see which aspects of business you, you do. That's great to learn, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. And you mentioned there, Linda, as well, telephone inquiries. I think we all forget that there is still there are still telephones out there. Um, and I just wanted to make <laughs> great get a, get a, a contract or get a proposal out very quickly um, and get as many as you can, uh, can uh, as quickly as you can to generate business for the for the property. Um, but if that can free up somebody just to pick up the phone to a prospect and say, I've sent you the proposal or I'm sending you the proposal this afternoon, just want to check this or want to check you got it. How does it look? And it's so much easier on the phone to say, well, you know, it is actually so much over my budget or I did want to have champagne. Yeah. I'm not happy with the Prosecco that you've said, whatever it, whatever it might yeah, be. Yeah, no matter what it is, it is it, it, you have to follow up by phone. That's, you still have to have that contact. And do you know what I found? Most people now, when, they, when they're inquiring, their mobile phone is their first point of contact before they put their business phone in. So actually now getting, getting hold of people quite, and, and I found that people are really happy to talk to you because they're working from home, the contact's different, you know, they, they've got something they want to place in, in your, in, and, and we have an equal amount of enthusiasm because, you know, I've got a project and they want to buy. So, of course, that's half, half a thing. But I, I have to say that it's been a pleasure talking to people because people still like that if you can contact. Yes. And, and I think I, I used to always try someone's desk phone before I tried their mobile phone pre-pandemic. Because no, I just thought that's quite, yeah. it's completely flipped, hasn't it? Yeah. 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 Get straight through to them. And then now I always have the fear that you're phoning somebody when they're on a live webinar or a, or a masterclass <laughs> or something. Um, and I always I always have to put all the various phones, the office phones in the drawers in the office because I, I tend to sit here on my own when I'm when I'm live with something like this. And then when the phone rings, I have to make sure it's completely buried away. Otherwise <laughs> it rings. So there we go. Um, right. Well, I, I think if you've if we've got so we're, we're three minutes off half past ten, that's flown by. If you've got any um, closing comments that you want to make, if you start start with you, if there's anything you just want to want to add anything you, I haven't allowed you to touch on because time <laughs> whizzed by so quickly yeah I would I would just say you know um adaptability is key as I mentioned earlier you know embrace change don't don't be afraid if you know right now you're working in your hotel um don't don't be afraid to you know just switch your strategy you know don't necessarily follow the crowd do what you feel is best because you know your business you know your market your demographic far better you know than than any potential um system uh, you know out there but but you know I think it is important to to review your tech stack and and so Certainly the last few months um, more than ever um, you know it's it's been very much a boom for technology in kind of the you know I suppose the seat where I am because people as you say Linda have got that time they want to talk to you and they actually welcome that talk um, yeah, so so yes Jane just to sort of also allude to and, and confirm um, summary to your point you can't beat seeing people in person you know live is life as they say um, there's always those bits body language that you just don't quite get over a zoom call of course but they do serve their purpose but I really love going into people's homes you know meeting their dogs seeing their breakfast bar yes. you know kind of drooling over you know their interiors and things like that <laughs> um but you know what it, it actually does work and you know if you'd have said 20 years ago we'd be working like this at, you know you'd never have probably imagined or even guessed but um very productive and, and you know I, I it quite works well for me you know because my fatigue's so much better I'm certainly at my best um and, and I think as operators you know it's important to have that home and work life balance um but you know um yeah may, may our may we kind of bounce back and recover bigger and better than ever before of every faith we will 
Absolutely. And can you can you do the same in 10 seconds? Linda? <laughs> well, I'm about to say, well said, Maria. <laughs> I, 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 I echo what Maria says, but again, I think being open to change, being adaptable and don't be afraid to, you know, to relook at your processes in your hotels and look at your people and, and just think about how you can sort of get that communication strong again with each other and um, yeah, deliver a uh, uh, don't be afraid of digital solutions it's the way forward yeah and I'm consulting somewhere else and having to move a hundred times today but never mind that's how adaptable we are <laughs> so let, let technology do the hard work and, and yeah. let's keep the, the people the people aspect front of front of mind um, and yeah, that does bring us everybody. straight on to 10 30 so I need to say thank you very much to both Maria and Linda you've been very insightful thank you, today. Lovely <laughs> thank, you. Today. thank you very much Super. All of our masterclasses are recorded and will be available to view on the website, um, hopefully, if not later today, by Monday morning for this one, the majority are already there. Um, and we will also be putting a compilation together of the best bits of this week's Pain Points masterclasses. So um, the soundest pieces of advice uh, will all be consolidated into a single point. So please keep connecting with us at HOSPA via our website, social media, and of course, email. But thank you all very much for listening. And it's goodbye for today. Thanks and goodbye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.